So before we actually solve an equation, let me write one on the board. x plus 2 is equal to 3. The unknown quantity is x. Now, we know this is an equation because it has an equal sign. And let me go ahead and put a semicolon here, and I'm going to tell you that x is equal to 1. And I'm going to ask you, is this a valid solution for this equation? Now, the way you figure that out is you actually take x and you plug it in there and see if it satisfies, if it's true. So let's put 1 in here, and what we'll have is 1 plus 2 equals, with a question mark, because I'm not sure yet, 3. And I think you can realize and understand that 3 is equal to 3, so yes, this is a solution. So what you figured out is that x is equal to 1 is the solution. It's the only number that works for this equation. Uh, and we've proven that it works because we take the answer, we stick back in there, and we verify that it's true. All right. So let's do another one of these guys. Let's say we have a minus 7 is equal to 0. And let's say that a is equal to negative 7. And we're trying to figure out, is this a valid solution, uh, or is this the solution to this equation? So let's put it in there. Negative 7 for a minus 7, question mark, is that equal to 0? Well, if we go back to adding and subtracting numbers, we have a, we're already starting with a negative 7, and we're subtracting 7 more. So based on what we've done in previous lessons, you should realize that this is negative 14. And this is definitely not equal to 0, so no. This is not the solution to the equation. Um, and by the way, I'll take a second to tell you that when we actually start solving these equations and you get an answer, the great thing about algebra is you always know if you're correct. Because you can take that answer and you can stick it back into the problem like we're doing here and see if it works. And if it does work, then you've done everything correctly. And if it doesn't work, then you got the wrong answer somehow. Okay? Let's go ahead and do one like this. Let's do 2 times x is equal to 4, and let's say that x is equal to 2. Now we're trying to figure out, is this the valid solution? So let's stick it in here. 2 times 2, because we're substituting for x, equals with a question mark 4. And I think you would agree that 4 is equal to 4. So yes, this is the solution to this equation. All right, let's do another one. 3 times x minus 1 is equal to 7, and let's say that x is equal to 2. Is this a valid solution to this equation? So we stick x in here, and we'll get 3 times x is equal to 2 minus 1 equals with a question mark 7. 3 times 2, we have to do this first because this is multiplication. We get 6. We still have to subtract the 1 uh, like this. 6 minus 1 is 5, which, as you know, is not equal to 7, so no, this is not the solution to this equation, because 5, when you plug it in, you don't get the answer you expect. All right, so let's go through. Let's do one that's a little bit different. We'll have y divided by 7 equals 4. And we'll say that y is equal to 28. Is this a solution, or is this the solution to the equation? So let's take value of y and stick it in here. 28 divided by 7 equal with a question mark 4. 28 divided by 7 is 4. So, in fact, it does satisfy the equation. Yes, this is the solution. Y is equal to 28. All right. Let's go on and do the next one. What if you have x over 5 is equal to x? And let's ask ourselves, is x equal 0 the solution to this guy? Now, this looks a little different at first because we have x in both places. But don't be startled by that. All it means is everywhere you see x, you have to substitute for what you think x is. In this case, it's equal to 0, or so we think. So let's stick it in there. 0 divided by 5 is equal to 0. And we have to figure out, are these things really equal? Well, what is 0 divided by 5? 0 divided by anything is actually 0. So this does satisfy it. Yes, this is the solution to that equation. All right, we'll do one more of this type. Let's say we have 3 times k plus 5 is equal to 5 times k minus 1. And we're going to ask ourselves, is k is equal to 3? Is this a solution to the equation? Notice again, we have k in two places. That's OK. You can see the variable on both sides of the equal sign in multiple places, whatever. k is the unknown. 
I don't know what k is. Of course, in this particular problem, I'm asking, is k equal 3 the solution? So what I do is I just substitute it in. And notice in some of these problems I've been using a, and some of these problems I've been using x, and some of them I've been using other letters. The variables don't matter. In this case, we're using k to kind of show you that. It doesn't matter what variable you use. So let's stick k is equal to 3 in here. So we'll have 3 times 3 plus 5 is equal to 5 times k, which is 3. And that's equal to, uh, I should say, there's a minus sign here, minus 1. And we're asking ourselves, are these equal? So we have to do the multiplication first. 3 times 3 is 9. We still have to add the 5. We'll do that later. 5 times 3 is 15. So we leave that like this. 9 plus 5 is 14. Um, and 15 by 1 is 14. So yes, this is correct. k is equal to 3 is the solution to this equation. So it satisfies it. All right, so, so far what we've done is we have not really solved anything. I've given equations, and we have, um, we have taken the answer that's given for the variable, put it in there, and verified if it's correct, right?